Stephen Graham and Sean Bean are both superstars in my book, and I was really happy when I learned that they were making a show together, even though I'm not a big fan of prison dramas. I don't think I would have given it a chance if it wasn't for this duo, and I'm glad that I tuned in. Hi there mate, how's it going? It's Benjo here, and this is a breakdown and review of Time Episode 1. Sean Bean plays a comic by the name of Mark Cobden. He's a teacher in his 50s and he is in prison because he ran someone over when he was drunk. Mark has to do four years in prison for that, if I'm not mistaken. That is his sentence. He's not a cold-blooded murderer, but he has to be in the same prison as those types of ruthless criminals. This simple fact allows us to sympathize with our main character on some level, but I'm not suggesting that it excuses his crime. It just highlights that almost every single person can feel like a fish out of water following a single stupid decision. That decision for Mark was driving when he was drunk. In the first moments of the show though, we don't know anything about Mark's past. However, Sean Bean's performance is so brilliant that you can instantly deduce the fact that he doesn't belong there. The show kicks off in a prison van and the camera is basically less than a meter from Sean Bean's face and we immediately feel that Mark is shell-shocked. The prison man arrives at HMP Craigmore and we are with Mark every step of the way as he gets booked and his body gets checked. Mark calls his ex-wife because he forgot his parents number and we learn that he has a son. As you can imagine, this whole ordeal drove a wedge between Mark and his ex-wife, which also meant that Mark's relationship with his son was on hold. Mark spends the first night in a different cell and then we are introduced to Stephen Graham's character, a prison guard by the name of Eric McNally. He has a no-nonsense attitude but he doesn't seem to be unnecessarily rough. Eric walks Mark to his cell and Mark meets his cellmate Bernard. Now this guy was the MVP of the episode and that's saying something because Sean Bean was excellent too. Bernard is quick to notice things, for example he tells Mark that his hands are soft, so Bernard wonders if they sent Mark there to spy on him because he's suing the prison. Bernard argues that prisons are a big waste of money because they don't fix anybody. On the contrary, convicts often commit other crimes when they get out because the prisons don't rehabilitate them. All that money spent and they've got nothing to show for it in the long term. That night we see another side of Bernard as he has a panic attack and his solution is to cut himself which he has apparently done hundreds of times. It was incredibly shocking to see his body for the first time and Mark was freaked out as well. I mean this is what I was talking about when I said he felt like a fish out of water. He was probably teaching a class less than a year ago and now he's sharing a cell with a very troubled killer like Bernard. After Bernard cuts himself, Eric calls in the cavalry and they take Bernard away. Later on, Eric has to deal with another problem and this time it's a much bigger one. A prisoner knows about Eric's son and this prisoner approaches Eric to basically blackmail him. Eric's son is apparently a convict himself, but Eric is understandably keeping this a secret. This prisoner even has knowledge that Eric will visit his son the next day. The prisoner wants Eric to do something for him to keep his son safe or quote-unquote comfortable as he puts it, but his request isn't divulged yet. Eric says he'll take a few days to think about this proposal and in the meantime gets his son transferred to another prison. Now that his son is safe, he can officially go after the prisoner that threatened him. But there's one final twist. The prisoner knows about the new location of Eric's son, which completely bamboozles Eric who gets flustered and attacks the prisoner. Other guards have to get involved to calm Eric down. I've certainly enjoyed watching Eric's story so far because a premiere episode is at its best when it corners its main characters and this episode certainly did that. Eric has found himself in an impossible position, his solution to this problem backfired and his son is not safe. He's gonna have to play ball and do whatever the prisoner wants him to do. 
From a scriptwriting point of view, Eric's story shows how important it is to innovate when your subject matter is as popular as something like prison dramas. There have been hundreds of movies and TV shows like this, but I can't remember seeing one that featured a prison guard whose son is a prisoner somewhere else, which causes the guard to get blackmailed. That new point of view separates this show from all the other prison dramas out there. Getting back to Mark, he also has his own share of problems. His senses of guilt and regrets are transparent. He keeps hearing the video of the man he killed and he can't sleep. I suppose this is how a quote unquote good man lives with the fact that he killed somebody. Mark is dealing with the classic prison bully as well. This tough lad's name is Jono. He picks up some sugar from Mark's cell and mixes it with some boiling water and pours that water over Baz's face. The sugar makes the water stick on Baz who is now disfigured. Mark is a witness to this which makes him even more uncomfortable. Mark and Jono's row continues throughout the episode. Jono keeps getting ahead of Mark in the telephone line and at one point Jono even ends Mark's call with his son. Mark gets angry, Jono punches him but Mark doesn't strike back. Tommy Hunter from Line of Duty makes a cameo as well to tell Mark that he should have hit Jono back. This prisoner says, quote, your life won't be worth living now, end quote. I believe it is safe to assume that things will only escalate and this prison will force the mild-mannered teacher to commit other crimes because that will be the only way to defend himself. He's gonna have to show that he can't be pushed around. In between all of these shenanigans, Bernard comes back to the cell, but he dies that same night. A nun by the name of Marie-Louise tells Mark that Bernard offed himself by taking all of his pills at once. He saved them up just to end his life. So all Mark sees in his first days is misery. At least his parents visit him and that allows him to feel normal for just a few moments. We also see other prisoners talking to their visitors and one of them is quite optimistic thanks to his wife. The wife tells this prisoner that prison is a clean slate, which makes me think that it won't end well for this lad. Optimistic thoughts in these types of shows are never ever a good sign, so keep your eyes peeled for this guy's fate. Additionally, I don't really trust this guard. He said he knew Bob Warren and that is presumably the man that Mark killed. There's just something about this guard's face. He doesn't look trustworthy to me. He could even be involved in what's happening to Eric. Eric presumed that the info about his son came from his son's prison, but maybe it came from Eric's prison and maybe it was this guard. Overall, this was an intriguing premiere with a fascinating premise. My favorite bit is Eric's story, but it was also captivating to watch Mark's psychological journey throughout the episode as he slowly realized what prison was all about. Sean Bean is an absolute gem of an actor. I watched him just a few months ago on a show called Snowpiercer and there he played an eccentric and fun villain and he nailed it. His role in this show is the opposite of that eccentric character and he doesn't miss a beat. He was basically perfect in this grim role. I'll be covering the remaining episodes of Time in the next couple of weeks. You can expect to see my breakdowns on Mondays, so subscribe if you haven't already. Well, what did you think about this episode? Leave your comments down below and like this video if you enjoyed this breakdown. That's it for now, take care and see you in the next video.